Okay, so why it's 4.37 in the morning. <laughs> Hi, this is Sue Megan Michael from Breaking Free from Toxic People and Breaking Free from Narcissistic Abuse. And pause the pup little butt right here. Hang on, he's and Megan Boo Boo. We're all we're literally all cuddled up in like a little square. Here's Megan Boo Boo. Pauses under here. And I don't want to disturb them. Oh my goodness. Alright, so now why in the last video when I, I <laughs> in the last video at the end when I was talking about uh, what the and the people pleasing is displeasing to people video. I like that title. <laughs> um by the way, there was a line that I wrote in the description, and I also added it to my blog. I thought it was really it's one of those channeled. Um, we'll talk about channeling um, messages another day. But uh, it, what did I say? They stand in judgment of our imperfections as we stand in front of them trying to perfect them. That goes with the other video. You could just think about that. All right. So why did I say that it's that these turbulent times of upheaval and change are going to be when you look back in the future some of the best times of your life? Um, when at the moment they're the upheaval and it's like living in a constant. Uh, like earthquake where the earth keeps cracking and you need to keep jumping from place to place and, and then the sky is opening up and then there's a huge storm and you're trying to like the water and the and you're trying to avoid the lighting and you don't want to stand under a tree but then the earth is breaking up and you're this is what life is like <laughs> this is what this is what life is like after abuse Oh yeah, the abuse is already done. You're free now. <laughs> you're free. And you're living in this storm. See, the thing is that, okay, as I was saying in the last video, so these feelings and these thoughts and these experiences they, they bubble up. They, they, they come up and we have to feel them. See, that's why I really think that things like, um, like I, I told you, I was on psych meds. I took pills for most of my life. Prescription pills. I took pills that were not prescription too. But I took prescription medication most of my life to stop feelings. Because honestly, when you're taking psych meds and stuff, that's what they're doing. They want to stop. That's what they're trying to do. To stop the feelings. That's not what we were created to do. That's why, and this is my theory, but I believe it firmly. I have a lifetime of experience on the other end, being in the system, as we've talked about systems. And I firmly believe that, that they give you these medications like anti-anxiety so that you don't, you're not anxious and, and sleep meds so that you can sleep and you don't deal with why you can't sleep. And antidepressants so you don't deal with why you're depressed you just and by the way those things don't really work for the most part anyway and that's a whole other story but some really really great documentaries on YouTube about psychiatry and big pharma and uh, this is actually documentaries on uh, Netflix and stuff too all right anyway that's not my deal right now <sighs> I hate when I get off top oh, I don't hate I don't like when I get off topic like that Okay, so all these things that we do, and sometimes it's not always psych med. Sometimes it's drinking. Sometimes it's smoking. Sometimes it's sex. Sometimes, you know, it's, sometimes it's whatever, illegal drugs. And sometimes it's, sometimes I think just the mental illness itself, I, I think that's what mental illness is. I think we're so... So overwhelmed with 
undealt with reasons that cause these emotions and then we have these emotions and we're trying to like sleep them away for like years at a time or hide in our house with agoraphobia I've been there by the way totally been there hide in our house with agoraphobia because we don't want to deal with the world when it's not outside the house it isn't outside our bodies and our minds it's in here it's in here it's we're not dealing with the things that we need to deal with and we're tortured and we're tortured souls all right so we so now we're healing now we're healing and we're dealing with whatever we need you know and it's post abuse and we're learning and we're on our path to enlightenment and we are becoming our greatest version and like a lot of us and then this is not just me i mean i have at least like five or six friends that have lost like over 100 pounds i lost 70 pounds more than once it, it, it seems like this is a, like a normal part of the healing process hang on i'm going to sneeze any minute now excuse me i'll be right back Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <clears throat> oh, that was attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Just suck that back. <laughs> okay. They know me. Oh, look at my angel. That's mommy's angel. Yes. My girl. Like, I know. I was starving. I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's 4.44. See? When you see repeating numbers like that, that's always a sign. It's actually a sign that you're in alignment with the universe. You're in the right path. And there's more details. You, can, you know who was really nice, really nice uh, to listen to? Doreen Virtue. In angel card readings. and Anyway. I don't know why I just thought of that. The repeating number thing made me think about that. All right. All right, so now we're in the healing phase. And it's all this upheaval. But, but a lot of us start to eat bit. I don't know where I got this reference from. There's some... I've never seen it. I've never seen it other than just... To, but you know that Pokemon game where there's... I've never seen it in person. But what I understand is that Pokemon Go is it takes the kids and the people, whatever, outside into the real world where they've been like in the house playing video game by themselves indoors for years and now it's taking the video games outside in the real world and interacting with other people. Well, that's kind of how I see healing. <clears throat> Missed it up. That's kind of how I see... Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. The healing from, uh, from mental illness and, and abuse because now when we don't especially when we don't have anybody else to <clears throat> listen most of us are used to being um, dependent to some extent and especially those of us who have been in the whole you know mental illness uh, institutionalization here and there kind of um, and then learned helplessness that's a beautiful look isn't it? I've got a waterfall of hair on my head <laughs> woo uh, institutionalization and <clears throat> learned helplessness, which um, I got from my mom, and she has herself, which is unfortunate. It's a heck of a way to grow up. But anyway, we don't. I think that our whole lives are in here, and we're always waiting or want or hoping for someone to rescue us or someone to fix our problems and <clears throat> I mean listen I I didn't I wasn't taught how to clean growing up and I watched my mother who would leave not when I was a child well, then when I was a child she had a cleaning lady um but when, when, once my dad was dead and she got older and she became a real hoarder and and she didn't like, she did not like to clean and, or do laundry. She just, at all, <laughs> at all. But so she would either wait until 
she would wait until she had bags. Well, she would wait until she had the money to pay somebody to do it, is what I'm trying to say. So you wait till you can afford to pay somebody. But sometimes that time doesn't come when you can afford to pay somebody. Especially if you're, if you're like in front of fixed income and that's not in your budget to have somebody clean your house or to have somebody do like, you know, your pounds of laundry. And then these things would just like build up and build up and build up. And then the frustration and the anxiety make you want to do it even less. I hate thinking about this or I don't like thinking about this because the truth is I was the same way. And even when... Even when I got out of the abuse, actually very much when I got out of the abuse, and now I'm now, well, not exactly, because I'm aware, I'm out of the abuse, and and I've, I'm already aware. We're going to talk about where I, all the places that I lived after I, after I left, and the room, all the rooms that I rented, and blah, blah, blah. So I was already, I was already, I had already grown up a lot in that year and a half, two years. I'd already grown up a lot. I had to take care of myself, how to be a good roommate, how to make, you had to clean because there's you leave somebody's roommate and there's common areas and you have to learn how to be agreeable. I think that's one thing we freaking know how to do is probably be agreeable with buttholes. But anyway, that's not the title of this video, so we'll move on. All right, so, but I learned. I learned and we, and we learn we learn how to take care of our own stuff. We learn that there is no Superman and we're not Lois Lane. I, you know, back in like 2013 one day I said, you know, I'm so tired of being, you know, of being my own Superman. Meaning that I'm Lois Lane and I need to be rescued all the time and I'm so tired of having to do all my own rescuing. Well, that was then. <laughs> and this is now and I don't and while I do totally self-champion all the time now I'm working on the all the time part because I don't like to let myself down and I know for a fact there's nobody else that's gonna sweep in and fix my life or clean my house or walk my dogs who knows? Maybe in this lifetime I will meet somebody that I can walk down the path of life with and will I be able to share some responsibilities? But none of those responsibilities are, are going to be for like raising me. We have to reparent ourselves. And to expect such things from other people is putting too great of an expectation on someone, number one, that doesn't even know us. And what if they do know us and they like us and they want to make us happy? What if they're not toxic? What if they're non-toxic? What if we meet someone who's non-toxic and they want to make us happy and they want to please us, but we're unpleasable. Inside we're unpleasable because we need and we want and we vote. And then we, we want this person to, to be what we need them to be and want them to be. And where, where's the end to that neediness. Where's the, I'm here for you, you're here for me, we walk side by side down the path of life. I carry my weight, you carry yours. If mine gets a little heavy, you can help me. If yours gets a little heavy, I can help you. Not, here I am, you carry me because I can't carry myself. See what I mean? This is Superman, this is Lois Lane. I want that. That that's not going to work. And I am not by any stretch of the imagination professing to be an expert, <laughs> an expert on unhealthy working relationships, but I really have my, my experience with unhealthy relationships and analyzing things with you every day to figure out why things didn't work. And in figuring out why things didn't work, we can figure out what well, works. Not only that, but I have some, I'm actually getting, I'm actually making friends now. I love you guys. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of you are married. And a lot of you are happily married, I mean. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. A lot of you are happily married. And you've dealt with narcissism and, and toxic people through your life, throughout your lives, but you have found a partner 
to walk through life with and you're happy and a lot of you've been married for a long time and and this I I see as so inspiring because it can be done and not, I'm sure nothing is perfect and you know I remember when we were growing up I had ideas in my mind that a relationship and I, this is going back a long time because I have seen, I think I learned at the age of like two that things aren't perfect but I, they're not really two I'm exaggerating but for sure I mean I used to think they, like a fairy tale like a white picket fence because I had no example of a good relationship my parents argued constantly and it was a big manipulation chip and although I didn't know that term back then that's what it was uh, with my mom obviously being the narcissism narcissist the narcissism she was the narcissism <laughs> she was the narcissist so all right I'm off topic hang on I'm trying to get back hmm okay why is this the best time of our life because we're learning, it all ties in, watch this, it all ties in so nice. <laughs> because we are learning to self-champion. We are losing weight, we are rescuing ourselves, we are educating ourselves, we are proving to ourselves that we can do this and we can do this well and it feels good there's such a satisfaction in accomplishing things that we didn't even know existed or that we could accomplish there's little things like I woke up tonight in the middle of the night and, <clears throat> and my kitchen was spotless I was so happy! Oh my gosh! <laughs> and recently I've been really keeping that up. Not 100% of the time. Yesterday there were about 8 hours where, where I had dishes in my sink and, and I was not happy and I didn't eat dinner last night. That's why I was so hungry in the middle of the night. I didn't make dinner last night because I had all these dishes in the sink. That's one reason to go vegan. I'm so, I mean, I'm not. I'm not vegan, obviously, because I'm about to tell you that I had like chicken. I cooked chicken the night before, and I had these pots in my sink. And as much as I love my 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 uh, the lack of technology in my kitchen, suddenly I'm sitting here with pots with grease, and I don't have a disposal, and I don't have a dishwasher, and I'm like, what do I do with this? Yuck and disgusting. But anyway, there were there was there were times in my life where those dishes would have sat there until they grew mold. That's true. When I lived in Colorado years ago, I was a mess mentally. I was a mess, and somehow a pile of dishes paralyzed me. Paralyzed me. And now using the guided meditations of Michael Seeley that now I talk about pretty much all the time um, and positive affirmations and mindfulness and all the healing that I'm doing that we're doing but for me I'm talking about me right now so all the healing that I'm doing on the inside and up here and the whole alignment with source and like I look at the dishes and I'm like eh, just some dishes and I, I took this big, in my head, this like, 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 in my head it was like a whole restaurant sink full of dirty dishes, right? And then I just went, shh. Suddenly, looking at the reality, there's some dishes in my sink. Just a few little, whatever. I wash them, I put them away, I wipe down the counters. By the way, I have learned how to um, how to use dissociation to my benefit. Now I don't know, you guys may have known this all your lives, but I didn't. I and I okay, so you know we dissociate, right? I'm gonna digress for a second. Because but you know about dissociation, right? So it's like daydreaming, it's how we deal with abuse when there's like all this gaslighting and stuff going on and I'm not going to do the greatest thing 
I'm not, I don't have a great definition for you right now, but I, if you don't know what I'm talking about exactly, I promise there you can look it up at, or we can even figure it out together. Uh, just comment below. But <clears throat> let me just go on and just assume that you know what I'm talking about. All right, so, just so we dissociate and our minds bring, take us elsewhere so that we're not having to deal with what's right there. So over time I'm learning that, well, that feels good. But I don't want to be dissociated all the time, and I don't want to be triggered to dissociate, which is what happens during abuse, where suddenly you're dissociated, and that wasn't your choice. But now, I can wash dishes. <laughs> I'm washing the dish. I didn't want to look at the grease in the pot. I didn't want to think about the fact that some chicken lost his life. And now, you know, the carcass is in the That makes me nauseous. And that's some of the stuff that caused me not to cook and, and clean the stuff for years because I overthought this. Thing, these things that I found, you know, disgusting. All right, <clears throat> let me wipe that disgusting word out of my mind. So anyway, so I'm just washing dishes, and I'm, I, I like, like I told you, I love the feel of water on my hands. So that helps me to relax. I seem to do really well with water. When I'm swimming, I can do this too. Although, who needs to relax when you're swimming? You are relaxed. <laughs> but anyway, so for me, water is sanctuary, and I'm washing the dishes, and and anyway, next thing I know, I'm done, and my kitchen is spotless. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> thank you who did that for me <sighs> thank you <laughs> I love you thank you I love you too yeah sometimes we have to play some games with ourselves to make it work to do what we need to do and that's okay that's okay I don't see the harm in that personally it's working for me <laughs> I don't do that all the Actually, I don't know, yeah, maybe I do that a lot now, to, for, for quick periods of time, if I have to, you know, pick up a pup, a dog, well, listen, I pick up dog poo, I walk my dogs every day, right? I, for years, I didn't, I couldn't even imagine having a, can you imagine? For years, I couldn't imagine having a dog, because the thought of picking up dog poo was unbearable to me. I want you to know that all these obsessive thoughts in your head and limiting beliefs, you can get past. And medication is not going to do it for you. And at that moment, listen, I used to think that, you know, that that, that medication was how to live life. Not how to live life, because I wasn't really... But I, I used to think that the good feeling that you got from medication was life's good feeling. I didn't know how to be true to me. I didn't know what real joy was. I didn't know what peace of mind was. I didn't know what control in your soul felt like. It was always, life was always a scramble. It was always a scramble to find the next good feeling. So was that next good feeling my next dose of psychiatric meds, or was that next good feeling, um, I don't know. When I was 16, there, were, there was a medication called Quaaludes. It's a good thing they took them off the market, because I really liked them. <laughs> Although I wouldn't be taking those now either. They, but they, they took them off the market like a year after I, you know, like, like when I was 17 or something like that. But my point is, that was what I thought of as a good feeling. And I want you to know for like for years, like 30 years, I thought, gee, that was like the be the only really good feeling in life was quaaludes. It's kind of messed up, but it's true. I used to think the only good feeling I ever really had in life, the best feeling I ever had was quaaludes and it's a shame that nothing will ever gonna feel that good again. Life isn't like that. And So for all those years, you know, I, if any of us do, we, we medicate and we cover up and so we cover up the real feelings because they're not comfortable and we cover them up, we medicate them with something that is comfortable that we can depend on. So if you have a drink, you know how you're going to feel. If you take a pill, you know how you're going to feel. 
if you've taken them before or had that drink before. You know it's consistent. It's a feeling and you know what to expect. If you're going to deal with an emotion and a situation, it's, that's a feeling, but you don't know what to expect. <clears throat> and people don't like... People fear the unknown. We, we feel, fear the unknown often. Hmm. It's when we become brave. We stop fearing the unknown. And we deal with what we have to deal with. And we deal with these feelings. And then we choose as we learn and grow like you and I right now. We choose to deal with the feelings. And to acknowledge them. And to invite them to come up. And I do this a lot while I'm, while I'm meditating now. I will add, and with Michael Seeley's voice in my head, <laughs> um, seriously, I'm laughing, but I'm not really laughing because this is what I do very often. I will just like ask my higher self, okay, just let me go ahead. Let me, what's, what do I need to remember today? Or first thing in the morning, because first thing in the morning, you're really tied in, connected with source. You don't have outside thoughts. Um, and I, and I ask myself just to, you know, what, what do I, what do I need to deal with? What do I want to think about? Give me, give me a memory. So instead of repressing all those negative memories from childhood, from abuse, from squishing them all down and stuffing them deep down and causing cancer and, and anxiety and all and depression and all that, I'm like, free me, free me, bring it out of me, take it, get, bring it out, I'm safe. I'm safe. I have Michael Seeley's voice in my head. I have all this. And by the way, it's not like you can do, it. I mean, one time helps, but do it repeatedly, do it every night and you will see your life change. Guided med and not just anybody's guided meditation, by the way. I'm, I just want to digress for just a moment to say that there are meditations on YouTube that trigger me. And I'm like, what did they just say? <gasps> and I don't want to be receptive and open because we know how to be receptive and open to, to brainwashing, okay? And that's only okay. It's, this is my opinion here, but it works for me. That's only okay to be open and receptive if you know what the message is coming in and you trust it. And you trust the messenger. That's why I talk about Michael Seeley meditations. Let me also mention Louise Hay with her positive affirmations. Um, and um, as I mentioned yesterday, Lisa Romano has some really nice meditations. It just depends on who you resonate with. But there are some, there, there are also uh, another, uh, there's Jason Stevenson and the Honest Guys. Oh, and there's also um, the Meditation Relax Club. Although I don't like a lot of their stuff but I love one or two of their, their meditations. Anyway, um, my point is, so you must be able to trust the messenger. Don't, you, you need to, if you're going to open yourself up to be receptive to, you know, to hypnosis and guided meditations, you need, I'm saying you need, but just, let's just go with this for the moment so I can finish my thought. Um, one needs to, <laughs> one needs to trust the words that are being said. And so now, like in the beginning, I used to listen to every single word, but, and I highly recommend he a headset, by the way, highly recommend. And this, because it, my budget, uh, pay, you know, it was on my, in my budget, this cost me $7, believe it or not, it cost me $7 on eBay. And now after that, I had bought, I purchased for like $20, um, a refurbished headset, which was originally like $40, and that stopped working in about a week. And this one's been working for like six months, my $7 headset. And I plug it in and it's granted this morning I, or this, this evening, I woke, I mean, I fall asleep with that on my head. So sometimes I wake up like this. Not my, not my favorite way to wake up, honestly. But so <laughs> if you can get one without a cord, that's probably a good idea. But strongly recommend that. So yeah, if you let the, uh, you know, make sure that you trust whatever this person is going to say. And then with that trust, you just go into it and you let it happen. And then in the meantime, so I allow like his words to go into my, into my head and into my psyche and heal me and make me safe. Cause I feel safe. In one of his videos, he says, cause you can think of my voice as the voice of an old friend. And that, my friends, is probably why I fell in love with Michael Seeley videos. Well, that and the fact that it just resonates with me, just like 
So meditation, medication. And then I ask everything to come up and then I, I, I feel and I think and I don't die. And then I talk about this with you and, and I feel better. And we process this together and then we discuss it in the comments and or in emails and stuff. And, and this is what feels good. This is really what feels good. And so all this self-championing and unmedicated growth time, excuse me, sorry, and becoming our greatest version, as Ralph Smart says, and our, our authentic self, getting in tune, getting in touch, becoming in sync with, with our higher self which is connected to source energy. That gut feeling, that gut feeling that we all talk about, that's something that we're all familiar with from the very beginning of, of when we realize that, you know, what's been going on and we look back and we're like, I knew, I knew in my gut that there was something wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. That's the higher self that I talk about. That's the connection to source. That is it, the gut instinct that, that was this inkling in your belly, but you pushed it away well, now embrace it with all of your heart and like ask the way to get in touch with this who works for me is like, do I like this? And actually I got this probably from a Dana, not probably from a Dana video. Cause she said, I remember she picked up a glass. She's like, I like this glass. I like the liquid that's in the glass. I do too. It was chai latte tea. <laughs> um, do I like this shirt? Do I, you know, just ask yourself, like I'm in the supermarket, I'm, lo I'm still stressed in supermarkets, right? So, but I, I try, you know, sometimes I, I, that's not my best thing yet. I haven't really mastered not being stressed at a supermarket, but I, but I have learned to ask myself, do I want this? Hire self, which should I buy this? And then, I don't think about it because if you think then then that it's that's that overthinking thing it isn't the thought it's a feeling and you'll know and a lot of times like I'll pick up something I'll be like mm -hmm, this feels good and then sometimes I'll pick up something and I'm like I throw stuff out like that too although I've probably made some mistakes and thrown some things out that I <laughs> for other reasons but I honestly it's a learning process <laughs> it's a learning process and I'd rather be surrounded by things that I feel good about and that I like than, than cluttered with stuff everywhere that maybe I'll use someday and maybe it's okay and you need to get in touch. You need it. I, I, I said it again. I'm sorry. But that's what we, that's what we need to do. We get, we, we get in touch with our higher selves. And I'm going to say goodbye in about two seconds. I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by and chatting with me again in the middle of the night. It's 5.11. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Okay. I hope I shared the message that I woke up thinking about. Again, this is C. Megan Michael coming to you from Breaking Free from Toxic People and Breaking Free from Narcissistic Abuse. Peace.